A few weeks ago, my link tree was wrongfully banned by Instagram. So I decided to code my own. Despite Instagram having some absolutely world-class support, I couldn't get my link tree unbanned. And if I wanted to continue my career as a certified tech yapper and get that sweet sponsorship money, I had to find another way around. And turns out, being a programmer, what better way to do that than to get AI to code one for me? So that's where I started. I opened up VO and I knew that VO is a bit sensitive, so you have to take some baby steps steps with it. So we began with a simple little link template that was responsive and just looked normal. I played around with having the data structure able to take not only links but also categories. And after that I started adding some styles, some colors, and started making it look like my old link tree, which it surprisingly did an okay job at. Until it got to the part where I need to make those little cool cloud things in the background and after an hour of wrestling with VO, I decided to just settle with what cursor gave me, which was just randomly placed cloud icons in the background. I guess that's not so bad. It's kind of ironic that even after all the bribing I did to VO, I still had to get Cursor to create one of the UI elements for me, even though, you know, VO is supposed to be the UI thing out there. But that being said, I still love VO and I moved everything over to Cursor anyways, because I had to actually start coding. Cursor was able to clean the code up pretty nicely, organize things, and I hosted it on GitHub pages because I figured I didn't need any elaborate hosting. And once I set that up with a custom domain, everything was actually looking pretty good. And that's when I remembered I had forgotten like half the functionality because you see 50% of Linktree is what the user sees, but the other 50% is data analytics for me as a creator to know who's clicking on what links and how many people are visiting my Linktree. And once I remembered that, I realized I couldn't actually host this on GitHub pages because, you know, GitHub pages serve static sites. And if I need to add authentication and a database to this, well, a static site isn't going to cut it. So I ended up moving over to Versal. And look, I already know what you're saying. Oh my God, Anthony, isn't Versal like your arch nemesis you complain about in every single YouTube video and live stream? And the answer is yes, I do complain about it a lot. But there is a difference when you're using it for a small scale application. You see all the terrible things I've experienced when it comes to Versal have happened on websites that have been clearing more than 250k page views per month. And unless I suddenly blow up on Instagram and YouTube, I don't think my link tree is going to be doing those kinds of numbers anytime soon. So after I got everything working on Versal, I ended up following Next.js's and Superbase's guide on how to set up basic authentication. And then I went ahead and created a single user with my email address and a custom password that I made so that I could log into the authenticated view of the app and nobody else would be able to sign up or do anything else. I then created a very basic table that just captures some information of the user session, like which social media platform did they come from and what links they ended up clicking on. And of course, you know the usual, like what your country is, your postal code, your city, your address, your social insurance number, credit card information, and you know, all the other basic information that a big company like Google would have if they added Google Analytics onto your website. And after that, it was just a matter of adding a quick backend route that could take the information from the front end and store it in the database. And we had our own homemade shitty Google Analytics. And I know you're doing that thing again where you're sitting there thinking like, oh my God, Anthony, wasn't it you that made a CAPTCHA game whose leaderboard got completely hacked by the entire internet just a day after you released it? This doesn't sound like it's the most secure thing in the world. And my response to that is, you're right, it's not the most secure thing in the world. I did add some Redis rate limiting for specific IPs that might come from bad actors or repeat users that are trying to flood my analytics. But yes, I am still just making a simple request to my backend and any 15 year old that knows how to use the web would probably, if they got a bit creative, be able to spam my database. But I know none of you guys are gonna do that because you guys are all really nice people. All that was left to do now that I had all the data stored from a user session and a bunch of authentication in place to make sure only I would be able to read it was to create a beautiful dashboard that I could sit there and stare at while I wait for people to come to my link tree. And of course that meant I just had to have one quick simple conversation with VO. I provided it with the exact data structure that it would be receiving from the backend, containing all the data it needed to render a bunch of beautiful graphics with. And I promise, I definitely did not spend over an hour arguing with it, trying to get it to create a perfect dashboard for you. It just magically created it on its own on the first try. And yeah, after a bit more name calling, it finally generated something that started to look good. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm just trying to do this in like one or two days. Let's just run with it. I ended up hosting it at links.sistily.dev. And I also created a nice little special subdomain for my good friends at Meta. So if they, in their all-knowing power and wisdom, decided to block this URL, I could just replace it with another subdomain meant specifically for Instagram. That way I wouldn't have to switch to an entirely brand new link provider every time Instagram makes a mistake and bans my link. And of course, this is provided that they don't actually ban the root URL, which it doesn't really make sense to do. Especially when you think of the link tree case, there's no way they're banning every single link tree just because of one bad 
bad actor, so I don't think they ban on the root level. But you know, I guess there's only one way to find out. Finally, I had done it my own custom link tree that any programmer would be proud of. And if you guys want to make your own, the entire thing is open source. I'm going to leave a link to the GitHub in the comments below with full instructions on how to modify it, how to set it up, and how to use it. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.